Hey guys, I'm going to see if I can get this to work. I'm going to try to record myself doing this all by myself. Um, but basically we're going to make an actual good mask. It should be basically N100. We're using these. They're big vacuum bags. The important part of this is you can see they're HEPA rated, which means they filter out 99 point something 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 percent of particles um, down to a certain size so they'll be actually better than the N95 masks that are in short supply um, and we are also using this stuff floor muffler it's a big roll of underlayment they put this under floating floors you can get this at Home Depot um, Lowe's probably has something similar but this is the Home Depot version Lowe's version is probably blue um, so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch them together and basically create a mask like this, um, which is very similar to N100 mask you'll see out there. Um, and then we're going to use a piece of drip edge to create a nose clamp. And then this, this gasket allows the mask to seal to your face better than a lot of the cloth masks um, do. And I use t-shirt strips because everybody sold out of elastic. So there you go. Let's see if I can give you guys a good view of what's going on. Basically have a template and I'll put a link to a version of it in the comments. Um, but it's essentially just these two rings that I cut out of a piece of paper. This one's for the foam, this one's for the cloth. So put that there, get my scissors. So from here, just mark this out on the filter fabric. And again, this is that same HEPA fabric. You can't get HEPA vac bags, which is what these are. Um, any vac bag could work, but it, and it's going to be better than just a piece of cloth, but HEPA is going to be much, much better in general. So I would definitely recommend HEPA. The filter portion now, and if I can remember where I just put that, there it is. Take this piece, basically the same thing. And if you're doing this, really, you should be doing it like an assembly line, which is the way I'm normal. I normally do it. Cut out all the foam pieces, cut out all the fabric pieces, cut out all the nose pieces, cut out all the little strip T-shirt and then sew them all together and assemble them. Um, but I'm just doing this for the video one at a time, which makes it a bit slower. Um, so for this piece, you're gonna cut the middle out too, and that's what you're gonna breathe through. Okay, so we have our two pieces of cloth, our piece of foam and piece of cloth. So take a couple pins. You don't want to pin this up too much. First off, you don't want to put a ton of unnecessary holes in your filter. Um, but this just kind of helps keep it symmetrical. So 
pick the top and the bottom and you're just gonna we're just gonna pin these two points so we have references so it's like somewhat symmetrical and come back in not sure if you can see that but you don't want to go too far in on the mask I had my pin somewhere there it is So just the top and bottom. Just so it's like that. And that'll just give you like kind of keep it symmetrical-ish. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see it here or not. Yeah, it should work. So I'm going to start at what is basically the top. It's not really super different, but it does make a bit of a difference. So this is this is kind of the top. That's kind of the bottom. Start at the top. And then I'm just going to, I'm folding little pleats into this as it goes around so that they fit flush. And that's going to make the filter fabric just stay off your face. Um, but it also means that when you tighten the straps on the mask, the tension goes into the foam, which is where you want it, because that's what's going to fit against your face um, and make the thing seal tight and force the air through the filter. Top a bit, just make sure it's not going to come unraveled. I need my scissors. Snip it off, and then I'm going to take a T-shirt. Uh, so I can go through for you guys. I'm not a pro at the video part of this. So this is the top of a T-shirt that I use to make just cloth masks out of. Um, I'm just going to snip off the sleeves. Get that in the way now. And then this way, just have to double it over so I can get two strips out of each. And these strips are going to be a lot longer than you need. That's fine. Um, it's not something you, uh, I don't feel the need to be super economical cool about because I have a ton of t-shirts. Um, so now you have your mask. Pull out these pins. Um, you can trim around the edges a little bit just to make it neat while you before you put the straps on. But this isn't super important or really part of the effectiveness of the mask. It's just to make your sewing teacher happy. Um, now, back to the machine. I haven't done a ton of experimentation to figure out where the straps make the most sense, but I just eyeball this and I think they. They've ended up in a few different places and it's been fine. So you'll see where they end up um, when I'm done. But go back and forth. Let's make sure it's good. I'm not going to unravel again.
Okay. So, you see now we have these four things. So there's the top and the bottom. Um, the only thing we have left to do is put the nose piece on. That'll hold it so you don't breathe through these gaps. Um, and you can see uh, these are all in the process of that of that drying here. And I'll take one of those off and show you once I get the, the other one set up. But I'll take you outside. Um, what I'm using for that, basically on real face masks, all I use for that is um, a piece of aluminum. So I went and got some aluminum at the hardware store in the form of drip edge, which is this stuff here. It's used for roofing. You can find it in the roofing section. And hope you're not getting dizzy. You basically just want a little strip that'll bend over your over your nose of that. So um, I have a big nose, making these longer maybe than everybody has to make them, but better more than less. You can always just bend it flat onto your face. Um, then just snip the corners off because they can be sharp. And again, because it's sharp, take a piece of sandpaper. So make sure you like cut it clean because if there's like a that has an actual splinter on it, that's not going to be good. So make sure to not have that kind of stuff on there. They can really. Cut somebody and then just smooth out all the edges. So, again, you don't want to scratch someone's retina just to give them a mask. And then what I do is, and then what I do is scuff up the uh, the back of this here so that the glue sticks to it. So just taking and giving it a little bit, take the sheen off it. And see there, there's another, another splinter on that. I'm not paying attention. We don't want that. So, smooth that section out. Um, so I have that scuffed. I have some super glue. This is like a gel super glue. So it's a little bit easier to, to work with. I want to just run a bead of this. Right down that. And then take the mask. And you go right onto the top of it. And I didn't trim any of these little threads off, but normally I would do that before this step. And you just press it on there. Just like that. Get yourself some clothespins. Start in the middle. Make sure you get all the way to the sides. I use about five for each one. So you can see just holding that in place till the glue dries. And then these ones have dried already. So I used a lot more than five on this one. Um, but you'll see, you now have that firmly glued on there. And you can bend that and form it around the shape of your nose or someone else can do the same. Um, tying these on because, again, they don't have elastic. It's a, kind of a two-step process to get the, the nose piece on. The right way it wants to just jump right up on your nose, your eyes. Just kind of pinch that in, get that good, and then tie it back. Um, yeah, and then you want to make sure that when you turn your head around, missed the knot here that you still have a tight fit and that it fits just this thing so it fits around your nose. Make sure you're breathing through the actual filter, um, which I am.
which is great. And I can turn my head around and all the gaskets still hold tight on my face. And that's crucial. Uh, you'll see a lot of people will use actually like a two-sided tape on their nose to hold the, the part up top even better. But there you have it, an actual N100 mask. Um, I think if you don't have a sewing machine, it should be pretty easy. You can, I mean, you can make this with a stable, stapler or, or really anything um, if you had the materials. And if you don't have have a back bags, you could use some other back bag. It wouldn't be as good, but it would be better than just a t-shirt. Um, and um, if you were really concerned, you could go around this inside here and and glue that so that you have extra sure that there's nothing going through the the stitch. But I don't I don't really think anything would go through the stitch. Anyway, there you have it. Stay safe.